Hello, uh, welcome to this video in how to draw a Lego brick using a two-point perspective drawing technique. Uh, as you can see here, I've used graphical markers to colour it in. You could just as easily use colouring pencils. Uh, for this, you'll need ideally uh, a sharp pencil, a fine liner pen and a sharpie as well. And don't forget a ruler. Uh, just before I get into it, just be aware, if, if you're drawing a cylinder shape, um, uh, one thing to be aware of is that a creating box could help. This is like a 3D box. And within that, if you mark the sort of center points of the top, with, within that, you can then draw an oval shape, something like that. And then if you go straight down from the sides, and then you do another sort of curve, following that, you end up with a quite an accurate looking oval. And that's how the top of this Lego brick is gonna look. I'll get to that later. All right, to get started, first thing you need is to do a vertical line about, well, I'm gonna do this one five centimeters. Okay, that can be quite heavy. And then at either side of the page, you're gonna have two vanishing points, like so. And then you're gonna do some faint guidelines. And the idea is these vanishing points form like a horizon and as things move towards the horizon, they shrink. So these guidelines disappear into those vanishing points, like that. Now imagine if, if my ruler here was the horizon, things get smaller as they disappear, as they get further away. Right, um, I'm gonna do another set of vertical lines here, approximately here, and these go straight up again. That is perpendicular to that, so if these lines went on forever, they would never cross. And then the same on the other side, equally spaced. It'll look something like that. Then from the top of one side, you're going to go across to the vanishing point. And then the same over here, the top of here, across to the vanishing point. Now, what that's created is a box. So I could actually erase these guidelines now, and I end up with quite a accurate looking um, uh, 3D box. Uh, however, I'm not going to erase those guidelines yet because I need to do the top of the Lego brick. Uh, now to do that, I would, if I were you, we need another set of guidelines. So I'm going to go from, from this corner, I'm going to mark a spot that's going to be five or no, say six or seven millimeters from there to there. And then from this end, from there, I'm gonna set a mark about five millimeters. So that distance is slightly longer than that distance. And that's because, again, these distances are shrinking as they're getting further away. On this side, same again. I do a distance of about six or seven millimeters there. And then from that end, about five millimeters. This is where it gets a little bit complicated. I'm going to do another set of guidelines now. Right to the vanishing points. Same here. To the vanishing points. And this has given me an area where the cylinder is going to go. And our challenge is to build up a little a box on top, which will help us do an accurate cylinder. Right, to do my box on the top, where I've got this point crossing, I'm gonna go up. If I go up about 10 millimeters, nine millimeters from there, I'm gonna do the same here. Nine, 10 millimeters, the same here. Nine, 10 millimeters. And then I can join these up. Like so. And then from that point, I'm going across to the vanishing. So it's here, going towards the vanishing point, and from here, going towards the vanishing point. Now, you can sort of see it here. I've got my box underneath, I've got a box on top, and then within that box I've drawn a cylinder. So I know there's a lot of lines crossing here, but if I just go over the box that I've created to make it clear, I now know where I'm doing my cylinder. So it's going to touch, touch, touch the line. So 
we'll get a bit of an oval shape. And then from the sides there, we're going down about nine, 10 millimeters. And at the bottom there, I'm gonna complete that with another curve. Right, now I'm ready to go over in pen, as long as I'm happy with it, and then erase my guidelines. So I'm gonna use, um, you could go over with a ruler, but you can smudge the pen, so I'm just gonna do go freehand, nice and steady. Like so. Making sure that you, the cylinder it will cover the back of the, the object. So these lines don't go all the way because the cylinder gets in the way. Now, the good thing with uh, doing it in pencil first is if you make any mistakes, you can erase them. And then you can have really bold pen lines uh, on the page, making it stand out. Now to really finish that, what I like to do is add a thick pen line around the outside, just around the outside, not on the internal details. Um, so, you know, just a Sharpie would do. Again, just around the outside. Now this is where we can't afford to have any mistakes. Can you see how that's starting to really stand out on the page? All right, that's not looking bad. Uh, at this point, I would erase my pencil back. So, <laughs> making sure the pen is dry, just erase. Sorry for the camera wobble. This is why it pays earlier to not press too hard when you're using the pencil, because it'd be easier to erase. Right. If I just leave the pencil lines for now, just so you can get an idea of how it disappears into the distance. You can either color it with coloring pencils or I'm gonna save time by using a graphical marker. And if you imagine light coming from one direction, like if I imagine light coming here, I'd have a light side and a dark side. And the top might be something in between. Um, with graphical markers, you've got to work quite quickly because the ink dries very quickly. And these are not felt tips, okay? even though they have a similar effect. Now, if, if I let that ink dry and then I go over it, I get a different shade. So I've got to work quite quickly so that it's all the same. Okay, so that's one side. I might want to add just a quick dash here because I don't know if, if you've ever noticed how light hits objects, sometimes you can get colors standing out like that. On a cylinder, imagine the light's coming from this direction. One side would be quite dark. And then you might get the odd bit of white where the light's hitting it. I'm just gonna add some lines here as well. So it gives you a bit of an effect. Imagine light hitting that. Just to make it stand out on the page again, it's often a good idea if you add some sort of background color for it to rest on sort of makes it look like it's sitting on a surface then. Like so. And as you can see, using those two vanishing points to begin, having the vanish uh, the guidelines disappearing towards it, it looks like it's shrinking, it looks like quite a realistic object. Okay, so give that a go.